Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about one of my favorite, if not possibly my favorite, HTML5 game development framework, and that is Phaser. And that's because Phaser just turned 10, and to celebrate turning 10, they released Phaser 3.6, which they call their biggest release ever. So there's a lot to pack in that sentence. So yes, Phaser just turned 10. Uh, as you can see from the footage in the background, probably the most famous game recently made with Phaser was Vampire Survivors. Not by any means a uh, graphical tour de force, but I gotta say, this game has eaten so many hours of mine. Uh, if you have a Steam Deck, this is just the perfect companion game to it. And now this game is available on all kinds of different platforms, but it started life on Phaser. And let's go jump in, quick look at the Phaser 10th anniversary announcement. We're not going to go into the details here. I'm mostly going to focus on the 3.60 release that was released alongside it. So I'll get back to the new feature part here. But it kind of runs down through the history of Phaser, how it started out, and things I didn't know about him. He actually started life at uh, the game creator. Uh, they're still going strong. They make Game Guru and a bunch of other game creation kits. Uh, and then he went from there to do some game development at the company that does Wallace and Gromit stuff over in the UK. And then he created this framework to start doing uh, commercial game development in the browser. And it's been going strong ever since. If you want to read a little bit of the history of Phaser and its development, it's a fascinating read. It is available at this Patreon link. I will link it down below. It's a public link. You don't need to be a backer or anything like that. Uh, but the thing is, we're talking today about Phaser 3.60 and what is in it and why you should be excited. So the major new features here are there are 14 new VFX in there, including bloom, bloom, blur, distortion, glow, wipe, and more. The cool thing about this engine, and it's always been one of the nicest things about this engine, is the documentation is next to none. There is an absolute ton of examples, and we'll see some of those in just a second. Uh, we've also got uh, some small improvements to the mobile rendering performance, uh, over 7,000% faster. So yeah, that, that's uh, that's an improvement. Uh, and then on top of that, we have a new timeline sequencer. This is actually really cool as well. Now let me click it so I make sure that we cover that one specifically. Uh, that is um, for basically sequencing things. So you can have this happen, then this happen, then this happen, then this happen. That's what the sequencer is for. Uh, so if you've got a bunch of uh, animations you want to spawn and then tween between, so if you want to do cut scenes or intros, etc., that's what the sequencer is for. Uh, we got the plane game object. Um, which for perspective distortions, we got a new nine slice game object. This is nine slice is a way of describing a uh, an object, just like a button or something on screen by describing it the, the nine major coordinates of it. This allows you to scale it out infinitely in many different directions. This makes it so you can have sprite based but scalable UIs. That's what nine slices are generally for. Uh, built in Spectre JS. Uh, that's part of the Babylon JS project. It's for doing debugging of WebGL on the desktop and on mobile devices. We have the kind of confusingly named Named video game object. So you got to put a space in there. So video game object. So it is for handling videos and media streams. It's got literally nothing to do with video games other than, of course, if you put a video inside of your video game. But yeah, that, can, that name can definitely be a little confusing, not to, uh, you know, their discredit or anything. It's just the way it worked out. Uh, there is a brand new particle emitter that comes with explosive new features. That's a terrible pun. Uh, we have support for spatial audio and distance-based volume. Uh, so if you want to have your audio spaced around the world and have it, you know, left-right panning based off of the object's positions, that's what that is all about. There is a new Spine 4 plugin. Spine is an animation system. I've done a video about it. I haven't done it in a little while, but it's a cool bone-based 2D animation program, uh, and you can export out uh, directly from Spine into the Phaser game engine. Uh, Matter Physics has been upgraded to their more recent version. Tween Manager has better performance and uh, memory management. Tweens are basically, let's take the word between, and they handle going between two things. So if you've got a uh, sprite that's here and you want it to be there, but you don't want to deal with like the, all the parts of moving it between point A and point B, you can then use a tween. So that's what tweens are all about. It's just transitioning or moving between two states between an object. Uh, and then dynamic textures for rendering to a texture at runtime. Uh, we've got uh, time step features and timer events. We've got compressed textures and ESM module support. So uh, I don't know what the M stands for, but um, EMC script. So basically the newest version of JavaScript module support, which is a very nice thing in terms of structuring your code. Uh, the dynamic textures can often be used for something like uh, picture on picture. So what you can do is render a, a viewport of your scene from another scene and put it on like a camera display inside of screen, or uh, you can even use it for like picture in picture. So if you wanted to have like a quad view, player versus player versus player setup, often dynamic textures can be used to implement something like that. Uh, not of features across the board, smaller changes in the variety of different systems and other updates here. We're not going to get into the specifics of any of this stuff. Way too fine granular detail than what I want to cover today. Uh, so the really cool thing I kind of mentioned earlier on 
is uh, so the timeline thing is quite nice. I don't know if this will link me into the nah, it doesn't. That's unfortunate. All right, so I'll grab it this way. Um, so here you've got uh, the example homepage, and this is kind of the coolest thing ever. Is this is where they they showcase all of all of the aspects of Phaser. So for example, if you want to get into that new timeline thing, go here to the time category like so, and then what you're going to find is timeline. You go there, and then you can see a number of different examples of working with timelines. So for example, right here is uh, the, the one we had the picture of earlier on. This showcases it, so let's click it to play it. And here, as you see, the timeline manager enables you to set a bunch of um, things to happen and coordinate. So like one spider drops, then another, then another, then the pumpkin, and so on. And the cool thing about all other examples is any one of these, you can basically pop into the source code for it and see how it was done. So here, for example, they're setting up uh, a bunch of states. So here we called it, uh, here's a timeline for add spider. Here's a timeline for boss fight stuff. That's the pumpkin, I think. And then you just trigger them basically the timeline, just add a sequences of events in the timeline, and then the time for them to occur, and pop, there's how they happen. So you've got access to all the source code here from the examples, uh, and the examples are just huge. So again, I mentioned earlier on that there was uh, new effects being added. So let's go here, check out effects. So we got the new barrel effect, for example, and you can see it in action. So let's see an example of it running. And there you can see the new barrel effect being applied. Um, you can also click this little button and actually get a list of the newish stuff. So they're, they're just adding examples all the freaking time. I don't know if that's actually up to date though, because it doesn't look accurate to me. Uh, but the one of the, again, the nicest things about Phaser is extremely documented, but quite literally every aspect of it. So if you say you wanted to work with, okay, how do I handle um, spine? Here, go here, it's spine. Go in here, all right, how do I extend a spine game object? Here, and then at any particular time, again, you've got the code here, you can run it in a variety of different, uh, so you could run it in a mobile setting. You can jump into the source code. I happen to pick one that doesn't seem to run, uh, but you get the idea. So let's open this one up. Hopefully this is WebGL. Okay, so here you can see how spine works and how the examples work. And again, this is one of those things I've always really loved about Phaser in general, because it's just got a huge example pool, source code that you need to run it. And I also find that the source code is very readable. Um, and I find the engine itself is quite approachable. So again, there are reasons why there, this is one of my preferred HTML5 uh, frameworks. And more importantly, it has been battle tested. So it has been used to make a number of different games out there. And that is always a key thing. Also, I should have probably mentioned this off the hop, Phaser is also a uh, open source project. Uh, it is under the MIT license being browser based. It can run in just about every single browser you can imagine, especially because it has canvas rendering in addition to WebGL. So that fallback rendering makes it, you can run it on. A uh, huge number of devices. One of the issues probably was the fact that there was, you know, slower mobile rendering, and that's been an HTML problem all along, not just a phaser problem. So that 700% increase in mobile speed, uh, I think that is definitely welcome to developers. But phaser is one of those frameworks I highly recommend that you check out. It's uh, a very cool, mature product because as of right now, again, it is now 10 years old, uh, and they did just release phaser 3.60, and they say that release has more features than any they've had in the past, uh, and it is it's an impressive project. So if you're looking to do web games, uh, I would highly, highly recommend considering uh, the Phaser framework. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.